The November 10th, 2022 City of Friendswood Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting is now called to order. We will begin by receiving communication from the public, but seeing that we have no one from the public here this evening, we will move to the next item, and that is our consent agenda. These items are considered routine or ministerial in nature and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of items unless a commissioner so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for the Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting held Thursday, October 13th, 2022, and the final plat of Avalon at Friendswood Section 3? Motion to approve. Nope. Second. That's good. <laughs> Richard, yeah, he made it. Barely. He got it, barely. Uh, we have a, so any, uh, no, never mind, no discussion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Shows to be unanimous. Next on the agenda are action items. According to the Planning and Zoning Rules of Procedure R21-18, all action of the commission shall be made by an affirmative vote, vote of four or more members of the commission present at such commission meetings. Our only action item tonight is to consider approval of the preliminary plat of Georgetown Detention Basin Phase 1, a subdivision of 43.447 acres located in the International Great Northern Railroad Company Survey, Block 1, Section 23, Abstract 624, City of Friendswood, Galveston County, Texas. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, Aubrey, is there um, any staff summary on this? Um, this is just um, the, the beginning of Georgetown subdivision. Um, they're just trying to get moving forward with some development. Um, so this is just their detention pond. Um, access to the pond will be um, a temporary access easement from 528 until, um, which is the path of the future boulevard that they're planning to build. So. Um, there is a temporary access easement like across the pond that's existing that will need to be abandoned before um, we record the plat. Um, but other than that, there's no items remaining. Would we need to approve it subject to that removal or we just approve it and it's ministerial to remove it permanently? Yeah, you can just approve it and we'll just make sure that it's off before we record the plat. Okay. Okay. Marcus, you made the motion any questions Travis anything none Tom no comment oh, we, we, we saw this before it just was modified slightly can you tell me what's changed um, yes when they went to the drainage district uh, the drainage district required um, additional right-of-way um, over basically straddling D Dickinson Bayou um, and so the property owner that was selling them the land had to give some additional um, property for right-of-way so this included uh, the acreage increased, so we had to do a new application. Gotcha. Thank you. I have nothing, nothing else. No, and I, I had nothing further other than that one easement that Aubrey just mentioned. Okay, with that, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Shows to be unanimous. Okay. Next is communications, and we will start with an update concerning the City Council's recent amendments to the City's boards and Commission and Council's appointment policy. Good evening, Commissioners. I'll Good take evening. this one. Um, recently, Council, here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Recently, Council took some action regarding their appointment policy as well as all their boards and commissions to combine them. They were um, all over the place, and so we put them all in one place so they'd be easier to find. So uh, Council had a retreat and discussed it. They then have a work session, and then after two readings, the ordinance just finally passed this last, thir last Monday. And some of the revisions to the appointment policy, it just moves the liaison's appointments from September to August. Um, it doesn't require council's approval of your rules so long as your rules are substantially similar to their rules. Um, it specifies that all applications will be kept on file for two years in accordance with the Record Retention Act. And it provides that vacancies will be filled in the manner which they're appointed. And it said that previously, just in different terms. The main thing was the appointment process. So the process now is the applicant list will be provided to the staff and then the staff liaison will get with the council liaison 
and then if appropriate and, and good that they would uh, engage the commission and then the commission would uh, potentially interview some of the candidates if that was appropriate and then they would get the mayor's uh, consensus and but put on a council meeting and then generally it would be approved after that um, what the policy admits it was very long policy so what we did is we took out a lot of the things that um, were we stuck in the ordinance, so everything was in the same place because a lot of those just dealt with all the boards and commissions. So things like um, details regarding the application process and what forms have to be submitted and the welcome letter and things like that were more administrative. So we took those out of the, the, uh, the policy. Um, matters that are in the ordinance that we put in the ordinance, like the attendance, um, uniform appointment dates, and things of that nature were moved to the ordinance. And then matters that are established by law, like your Public Information Act training and open meetings training, things like that, that don't really need to be stated in our policy because you just have to do it anyway. So those are the main changes in the appointment policy. So then we went to the codification. It kind of all went together. So um, as we said before, the boards and commissions, there were lots of them. They were created in different times, different ways, you know, either by ordinance, resolution, minute order. So we just kind of combined all those and stuck them in Chapter 2. So that's where um, your board or commission is. Um, specifically, we have a general section in there that are provisions that are applicable to all boards and commissions, and that would be attendance. So there's attendance policy that was previously in the policy, um, the appointment policy. Um, the uh, attendance is that you can miss uh, no more than three meetings um, during a six-month period, basically. And then uh, service, you serve at the pleasure of council. It established terms for advisory boards. It uh, three years terms for non-advisory boards, which you all, it changed to two year terms. Um, that will not change the current term that you're serving. You will still serve the term that you've been appointed, but for those that are appointed um, after this, after the effective date of the ordinance, then they will be serving two year terms. Um, those term limits, there's four three year terms or six two year terms. That's a total of 12, which is the same as councils. Um, that council can override that by three, four, uh, by four members voting that, that they can um, extend that. Vacancies, again, um, there's regular and alternate members. They're filled in the same manner as they were appointed. And rules of procedure, as we said before, just have to be substantially similar to councils. Um, the board or commission will elect a chair and vice chair. Quorum is a majority of the members. We'll provide staff of support and um, that none of our boards and commissions have the authority to bind council as far as committing funds of the city. That would all be through the city council. So then we went through and each division has something about how they're created, if they're meetings, if they're subject to the Open Meetings Act or not, and then there's powers and duties. So specific to the Planning and Zoning Commission, it says it's they're non-advisory since your decisions are um, final as far as plats and different things like that. Um, there are seven members of you all. Their staggered terms are now two years and your terms start July 1. So all that's the same basically except the two-year term. You are subject to the Open Meetings Act and it condenses the powers and duties um, to show that you are in charge of the subdivision ordinance, the zoning ordinance, um, need for sidewalks, if there's any appeals concerning um, manufactured homes. Um, you serve as a capital improvements advisory committee for impact fee purposes. Um, and also deal with comprehensive plans. So administer that and, and make sure that we're, we're on the right side and make recommendations in that regard. And then the famous one, all other duties is assigned. <laughs> so that's yours too. And that's basically, I just wanted, I wanted to update you what um, the changes were and if you had any questions, glad to answer those. Okay, thank you. Um, on the powers and duties, I kind of glanced at your longer list that was in our backup material. And it, it looks like it, Nothing. It's, I didn't notice anything material. Were there any material changes in powers and duties? No, sir. There wasn't anything to be anything material I, I, different. It, it looked all the same. And so the two-year terms. You may you clarified that it starts at the you know at the next time of the appointment. That's correct. Uh, how about the term limits of the? The same. It's all prospective. The ordinance will pro apply prospectively. So everybody's at zero, and we'll I go see. forward from I here. I see. Okay. Any, any, anything else? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, next on our communications, uh, I was going to announce that we will not have a regular meeting on November 24th uh, because of Thanksgiving. Uh, 
is at the holiday. And therefore, our next meeting is our annual retreat on Tuesday, November 29th, starting at 6 p.m. at the Friendswood Library. Our next regular uh, meeting after that is scheduled for Thursday, December 8th. I will say that at the, li at the library during our annual meeting will also be uh, one of the town hall meetings for the Stevenson Park discussions at the same time. So it may be a little crowded in the, in the library. Okay, that's I was going to... That's at 6 o'clock, you said? Yes. Uh, we'll continue our, continue our communications with any comments from commissioners. I'll start, Marcus, anything, comments? I attended the GCCDD meeting the other day, and m the bulk of that meeting was around what we just looked at with the Dickinson Bayou and the right-of-way or easement on either side. They had two, pro two different projects that were asking for variances, one on Dickinson Bayou, the other one on Box Ditch, which goes into Dickinson Bayou. And there just seemed to be some uh, concern on how wide that easement was. So I think they're gonna go back and workshop it again that's one of those things that popped up on, yeah. on this plat. So that's all, that's all I've got. So if they workshop that again, does that mean this is gonna be revised again and we'd be seeing it again? I, I don't know if it'll be revised again. I think it's more of a clarification. Okay. Joe, you were but, it might, but it might be a going forward, they might change how they look at some of these. I don't, oh, I, I see. wouldn't see, I wouldn't think it would imp have any impact on what we just did. One okay. of the reasons they did it was because, uh, or talked about that was because the Westland or Westland Ranch in Dickinson or League City uh, was approved for sections I don't know, one through six a few years ago. Right. But that came before they changed their criteria. So 150 so feet or something like that. It was 150, now it's 250. So they're coming back asking for a variance to go back to 150. Uh, I can't remember if they, I think they might have tabled that or something. Yeah, well, that's what yeah. they ended up with. But I th no, I think they gave it to them. They gave it to them because it was oh, upstream. With the qualifications. That's yeah, right. right. There was some, there were a few qualifications, but it did made no sense if the downstream was already at 150. Why have the upstream right. larger? It didn't match up. So I think they're going to look at it again. It could it could change, but that's all I've got. Oh, uh, nothing. Thank you, Travis. Nothing to add. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I have nothing. And uh, nothing further from me uh, as well. Uh, Council Member Branson, thank you for coming. You're welcome. What wisdom? Could you <laughs> step to the mic <laughs> and and what anything? Well, it's really good to like see y'all. It's been a while. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> and I appreciate the great job that y'all are doing. I know this is many times a thankless job, so I do appreciate what y'all do. You just thanked us. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't necessarily have any updates. I think Karen did a fine job of talking about what happened at council. So we had a light agenda on Monday. It was very nice. Okay, thank you yeah, very so much. Thank y'all. Aubrey? Uh, just the 2022 uh, October DRC meeting was in your backup material. Mm -hmm. um, it was a pretty light month. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Okay. Becky? Is there anything else? Thank you very much for the update. Okay, with that, um, thanks everyone. And our November 10th, 2022 planning and zoning regular meeting is now adjourned.